different carp feed in different ways. Uh, that's where the hermit really comes into play because if you've got some carp, um, they've got underslung mouths. They tend to pick a bait up and back off. If they think there's something wrong with it, they'll back off, you know, and that's where the elastic will stretch. It'll pull against, it'll pull against the carp's lip. The carp will panic, he bolts, he'll try and shake it. Off it goes, the elastic pulls out. You're into a running lead then. I've got a four ounce running lead. On the other hand, you've got some fish, like your 30 pounders, and I've, I've, I've studied them more than I've studied any other fish. They literally, they have, to, they have to tilt down. They have to pick their food up and then they have to make themselves go horizontal um, because all the food will fall out. So that's where the lead will lift up with it. The elastic will stretch, the lead starts lifting up and it, it actually sits on the, on the little stem, which is what they call the fulcrum point. That actually makes the, the lead heavier about 25%. And when that lead's dangling about with that elastic, all the fish does, he panics, he bolts. He, there's nothing he can do. He's done, he's hooked, it's over. So it works for different fish. You know, if you're fishing like a spod mix um, over, over beds of hemp, you're training the fish to, to stay in a smaller area and, and feed in a, a less normal way than they normally feed. So that's where the hermit will come into play. You get that move in 10 mil, in that scenario, it'll catch you more fish. So it, it, it catches those different types of fi fish, the way they feed. And I think that's probably why I've caught some of these fish that don't get caught for, for 18 years, for 10 years, eight years. Um, and that's why I'm catching some of them because it, 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 that, that hermit lead sorts out every feeding scenario that I've seen anyway. And I've seen them in the edges. I've had them in the edges, watched them. They, they tend to shake. That's the ones I've seen. But I think that's a slightly different thing in the margin. They just feed slightly differently. They're more timid. They, 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 they know they're in the edges. They know humans are about. I just think it's slightly different than if you've got a feeding scenario out in the middle of the lake. But the hermit will sort out, as far as I'm concerned and what I can see, every feeding scenario that I've come across. It's worked on every lake I've taken it to, whether it'll be a big pit, a small pit, it's literally every scenario it's worked. I spoke about how, how I use it and when I use it, and I literally use it from sort of November onwards, um, up till, you know, up till the end of March. So I'm not using massive amounts of boilies. And if I do, I'm crumbing them down to powder, like baby food, or I'm using the little, the, 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 the sticky bloodworm pellets, the 2.3s, which literally go down the mush. So you're, you're creating much the same. So I'm not over baiting, it's, it's one of those, where I'm putting it in a bag, what I make sure is that I've got the, the same the same materials I'm, I'm actually spawning out, whether it'll be the, the, the bloodworm pellet, whether it'll be the manila ground boilies, whether it'll be maggot. You can actually, you know, when I put it in the bag, which we'll show you in a bit, um, I'm putting bloodworm pellet, half a, half a bag of maggot, and then bloodworm pellet at the top. So I've got what I'm spawning out, you know, bloodworm pellet with, with the uh, manila active mix. It's exactly the same as what's out there. So I'm not, I'm not changing. I'm, it's not, not different to the, to the bait I'm putting out. So literally, you're sticking out baby food, um, but I've done it in a bag. So if a bird's not picked it up, uh, it's it sat there like a cold spring. It's ready to go. Baiting scenarios for the hermit leads. It's, it's a tricky one to explain over camera uh, because no situation is the same and, and every lake's different. You've got a different variety of amount of fish in a lake, weather conditions, everything has an effect in the winter. So a lot of the time I use a hermit lead just purely in a bag on its own. If I want to find where the fish are in the winter, it's not an easy trick that, you know. Um, I generally head towards the northeast part of the lake, always have done. It's always a couple of degrees warmer. A lot of the times it's worked, you know, 80, 80 odd percent, that's worked for me. So if I find the fish and I'm getting one or two or three bites, you know, I'm thinking, hold on, I'm going to put some bait in. Um, so if you're on a water like this one, where you can use maggot, I, I'll deploy maggot straight on top of the, straight on top because they just devour it. Like, you know, it's almost like you, you, you're creating a real competitive feeding situation. Um, but I also make sure that I put maggot on the hook bait. You know, it's quite, it's quite, um, I fished this, this particular lake I fished, I did the first night without maggot on the hook bait, I didn't catch anything. The second night, put them out there, I had 11 bites. So whether it was just they turned up, I don't know, you know, but I, I don't think it hurts to have a, a, a little wriggle, you know, just, just just gives them that extra bit of stimulation to, to want to take that hook bait back. And um, once, as we explained, once they've done that, it, it's job's done, you know, but so if I'm, you know, fishing, fishing a water where there's not that many fish in, 
I might bait an area and hopefully they'll come to me. Or if you fish somewhere like, you know, like your linears, where you know there's a load of fish, if you can find them in a bag, I'll get some bait in, hold them there. You know, it's, as I say, different scenarios for different sort of fishing scenarios. It, it's, you have to play it by ear, you know, on, on the day sometimes, but a lot of the time, that's the beauty of it. You can put out a solid bag and it's fishing for you. You've got a little bit, little bit of maggot, a little bit of bloodworm pellet and your nice hook bait. So that works, but if you're getting bites straight away, I would say bait up over the top of it and fish around it. People look at that sort of system and they think oh, it's very complicated. It really, really isn't. Um, what you're basically doing is you're taking, I use a four ounce lead um, for my own reasons. Uh, I like, you know, if you're fishing for the big fish, a heavier lead basically, but a lot, but you can use a two ounce lead with it as long as you use elastic that's, that's stretchy enough. But the principles of tying it, it's very, very easy. You're taking some main line, you're putting it through the tube, once you've cut the tail rubber down, your tail rubber is the first thing that goes down, goes onto the line. It's, you've got half a tail rubber with a nice sort of end to it. If you are using a leader, the leader knot can slide through. So you've put the tail rubber on, you put your line through the tube, you're tying it onto, I use the Thinking Angler's heavy rings. And the reason for that is because I've seen people using swivels, they, they do move about. Um, that, that just gives the fish a little bit more play. I want minimal play. I want it to be deadly effective. So it's as simple as that. So you literally, you've got a running lead with a ring that butts up against the bottom of the lead. So the clever part is once you take off the tail rubber, you're threading down. I use the Fox Marker Elastic. It's fantastic. It stretches. You get 20 meters for about four and a half quid. It's a lot cheaper than anything else I've seen out there. So I'll go and buy it. Um, and that spool lasts me for ages. Like, it depends, well, it depends on how many fish you're gonna catch. Um, and you just thread that through. Then you tab on the tail rubber just to stop it pulling through. You do a three-turn grinner knot onto the heavy ring, right next to the knot of the, the main line. Once you've tied that and cut that bit off, you can take off your tail rubber, tension it. I'll pull it around to the side of the lead, test it so it springs back in, uh, and then put the tail rubber on, cut it off, and that's it, ready to go. Then you're ready to tie on whatever rig you decide to use with it. I'll use a wivy, I'll use a, a wafter rig, but whatever, you, it worked with any rig. One thing worth mentioning, uh, which has become apparent during the tuitions, uh, we've used them on the tuitions and we've caught fish, and then the customer is, is trying, to, trying to pull, they're trying to get the elastic back through. The quickest and easiest way of resetting that hermit lead is to pull off the, you know, you've had your fish, so you've had your fun, pull off the, uh, the elastic and start again. Pull off the tail rubber, thread a new piece in, three turn grinner knot, and then trap it, test it. Make sure you test it. You always want it a little bit looser. Um, I've seen people where, where they had it so tight. Um, and it's, it, there's no point, you know, you, just, you might as well just fish a, an inline lead. Um, you, you, you literally, you want it loosish, as loose as you, not so it's flopping out the bottom of the, uh, the lead, but loosish so, so you can shake it a couple of mil and you can feel that resistance pulling back on you. It's almost, it's almost like gravity, but not as elastic. Um, so th that's, that's quite important. And the only other important thing to, to, to note when you're fishing the hermit lead, always fish a slackish line. Because if you fish a tight line to the lead, the elastic won't stretch out of the, out of the lead system. So that is very, very important that you loosen off, you slacken off your line. Because don't forget, once that elastic's gone, you're on a running lead. So you, it doesn't matter if the fish comes towards you, goes sideways, goes away from you, you'll get a screaming run. And I very rarely, I, I think twice, I've had two fish. One of them was a 46 pounder uh, up at Fursbury, uh, drop scale. He actually didn't run off. He broke the elastic, then was trying to shake the, the lead free. He knew he was hooked. And I thought, you cheeky bugger. So I wound down to him, boom, he was on, flat rodded me. And, uh, but though most of the time it's a screaming run.